All right, class, uh, welcome to lesson 2.4, slopes of parallel and perpendicular lines. So this lesson is all about finding uh, slopes of lines and essentially finding whether the lines are parallel to each other or perpendicular and how those slopes compare to each other. We'll also be looking at equations of lines. So we'll be writing an equation of a line that is parallel to another line or perpendicular to another line. So our learning goals is to be able to use slopes to solve problems about parallel and perpendicular lines. So first off, we're gonna discuss the slope intercept form. So um, we have a line in this, um, you know, in front of you, and we're gonna discuss, you know, what is, how do you find the slope of this line and the uh, y-intercept? So first off, the slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So in this case, m is your slope and b is your y-intercept. And so if you want to find the slope of this line, remember that slope is the measure of steepness. So it's how steep the line is. And so if the line is flat like the ground, it's going to have a slope of zero. And then if it inclines um, in this fashion from left to right, it's going up, then it's going to have a positive slope. If it's going from left to right downward, then that's a negative slope and it's going downhill in that case. But in this example, it's going uphill, so we're gonna have a positive slope. And to calculate the slope, we uh, find what we call the change in the y, and then uh, divide that by the change in the x. And so the change in the y is basically like your vertical distance. So um, you may recall that we um, talked about vertical distance when we in 1.3, when we um, partitioned lines. And so this is your vertical distance, and then this is your horizontal distance. So um, there's another way to define the slope, and that's with the symbols. And so um, we t tend to replace the change in symbol with the Greek letter delta. So that's the capital, um, that's the Greek letter capital delta. There is a lowercase delta as well, and it looks completely different. But uh, that delta means, uh, in this case, change in. So you literally read this as slope equals change in y over change in x. And uh, in order to find the change in the, a number or the vertical or the distance, right? Remember the change in is just a distance. So this is the vertical distance that we mentioned earlier. In order to find the vertical distance, you need to subtract the y coordinates. In order to find the horizontal distance, you need to subtract the x coordinates. All right, and so this is uh, on the diagram, this is what it represents. So you need to pick two points on that line. And then between any two points on that line, you should be able to find a horizontal distance and a vertical distance. So we'll call that change in X and change in Y. And you want to pick two points on the line that actually uh, look nice. And I, when I mean look nice, I mean that they're actually on uh, the units, not actually between any um, unit grids. So these are perfect lines because you have the point three comma two or three perfect points because you have three comma two and zero comma one. And you don't want to pick something like this where it's like a decimal that's one and then some kind of decimal between one and two. So you generally want to pick nice points. All right, so, um, so we have one of the points is three, two, and the other point here is zero, one. And so like I said, those are nice points to choose. And so we want to calculate this horizontal distance and then this vertical distance. And so we're going to subtract the x coordinates and the, to get the horizontal. So in this case, 3 minus 0. And then to get the vertical, we're going to subtract the y coordinates, 2 minus 1. And so if we did that, well, then we know that the vertical distance, the change in y is 2 minus 1. The change in x is 3 minus 0. And so according to the formula, we just have to put the change in y on top, the change in x on bottom. So we have 1 over 3 for my slope. And those are my x's and y's in that formula. So if you wanted to plug in uh, using this formula, then you can do that. All right, and so now we have the slope. Uh, and so now we need to find the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis. So in this case, the, it crosses the y-axis. Remember that this is the y-axis here, and this is the x-axis. So where does the graph cross the y-axis? Well, it looks like it crosses there. And that's, that's, it looks like it crosses at 1, and that coordinate is actually 0, 1. And so that, that y coordinate here, this y coordinate is also referred to as b in this formula right here. And the slope 
that we found earlier is actually referred to this, um, this letter. And so now we can go ahead and plug in what we know, the slope, which is the slope here is one third. Uh, and then this is the y-intercept, which is we got it to be one. All right, and that's how we write a line in um, slope-intercept form. And so now we're looking at a theorem here. Um, so to any two uh, non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if their slopes are equal. And so we're talking about any ver any lines that are parallel. So this is the this is what it means to be parallel is that the slopes have to be equal. Any two vertical lines are parallel. So remember that parallel lines do not intersect if they're in the same plane. So if you have a plane here, a flat a flat surface, uh, and you have two lines in that plane, as long as those two lines do not intersect, they are considered to be parallel, just like this. If the lines are not are not parallel, then you know at some point if you extend the line, it will eventually cross the other line. And so you can see in this case, so these lines will eventually cross the red one with the black one. Now, uh, so this is an example of two lines that will not cross. And again, remember, according to this theorem, the slopes have to be the same. And so if I were to pick any two points on that line, let's say these two points, and I measured the horizontal distance, in this case, this is three units, one, two, uh, and about three units here, and then the vertical uh, distance is one, well, then that has to match up with the other line as well. So if I pick two points on that line, and I measure the horizontal distance and then the vertical distance, that should also be the same. And so the slope of these two lines is one third. So the M is equal to one third. And so we know that these lines are parallel. Now is possible, it's entirely possible for two lines that are, um, that are not parallel to never intersect. So for example, if, um, if I had, you know, this flat plane and I had uh, this, this line C, we'll go ahead and use the same colors here. We have C here and then we have um, B, which looks like this. You can see I'm trying to draw it so it looks like this diagram on the left. So if you have those two lines, well, they clearly intersect. However, uh, that's only because they're, they're in two dimensions. If you were to um, include a third dimension here, which is this line, this um, Z axis, if you were to include a third dimension and suppose B is actually elevated. Uh, and so B is this purple line, the same purple line that I drew here, and B is actually elevated. Well, you can see that they never cross. So if you include a third dimension, sometimes lines that look like they'll cross actually won't cross. And those lines are, are lines that don't intersect but are not parallel because they are on different planes. Uh, this B is in an entirely different plane than uh, this other uh, line here. And so therefore they don't intersect. And those lines are called skew lines. So skew lines are lines that are not parallel, but they never intersect. Uh, and here's a perfect example of this. You might uh, remember that if you drive under a bridge or under an overpass or something like that, well then, uh, if you're driving one way in this road, you'll never cross, you'll never intersect the overpass because you'll see cars that are driving on the overpass and then you, you're, you're literally driving underneath them. And so they don't intersect because if they did, you would actually go into a car crash, right? And so these are examples of skewed lines. The cars that are driving over the, on the overpass itself, they're in an entirely different plane uh, of driving in this case than you are. Uh, and so therefore you guys will not and you guys will not intersect each other and yet you guys are not parallel to each other either And so these are known as skew lines All right, so now let's look at an example um, for um, Determining if two lines are parallel. So we have we want to determine if K and N are parallel as well as M and Q So let's look at the first part. We have uh, line K and line n. So line k, what we need to do is determine the slope of this line of both lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose two good points on the line. For example, this is a good point because it's negative two and two. 
So I'm going to label those points. Uh, this is on line K. So I have two nice points. I have negative 2 and 2. And let's choose this point, 2 and negative 3. And so I literally can actually count this horizontal distance. If I do that, I have 1, 2, 3, 4. This horizontal distance is 4. This vertical distance, 1, uh, right here, I can actually count that as well. That would be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So this is a vertical distance of 5. And so I know that the slope of that a line K, I'm going to use, I'm going to put a little K here to denote that it's for line K, is equal to 5 over 4. Remember, uh, remember, it's a change in y over the change in x. Okay, so that's my slope. Again, I can actually calculate that slope using these two points. So remember, if you wanted to calculate the slope um, using those coordinates, um, you, you, you have to know that this is x and this is y, this is x and this is y. And so you have to subtract uh, the y coordinates together and then subtract the x coordinates together. But when you do this, you have to use the same order, okay? So if I subtract this one first and then this one second, then I have to keep the same order when I do this, all right? So make sure that you're consistent. So I'm gonna choose this. And so this would be negative three for the first y coordinate minus and then two. And then be consistent. Still stay with this, this as your same as your first coordinate. And then it'll be two minus and then negative two. And so you can see you're going to get, uh, in this case, oh, and I forgot to say that, I forgot to mention that this 5 is actually, uh, this is a negative slope right here. This is, so this here, yeah, we, this is a, actually a negative slope because this line is actually going downward, okay? So if you're going left to right, like you're reading a, a book, right, left to right, and you see that the line is going downward, then that's a negative slope. If you're reading left to right and you see that the line is going upward like this, then it's a positive slope. Okay, so in this case, this right here is a negative slope. Okay, so going back to um, our calculation here, we have negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5 over, and then you have double negative here, makes this, turns this into a positive, 2 plus 2 is 4, and so you can see that these slopes match, negative 5 over 4. So practice um, doing finding the slope from the graph, but also practice using the calculation because you're going to be required to do, you know, both uh, ways uh, in any given problem. All right, so now we got the slope of, of K, and so now we want to do the slope of a line, I believe it was L. Let's see here. Yeah, line N, so let's go do line N here. So if we look at line N, it looks like we can choose this as a nice point right here. We can also choose this as a nice point. So we got two nice points there. And so that point on the bottom is four, negative two. And this point on top is one, two. So those are my two coordinates. So again, I can get the horizontal and the vertical distance, right? Like I did earlier. And if I did that, this uh, vertical distance is one, two, three, four. And then this horizontal distance is one, two, three. And so it looks like it's four thirds, four over three, if I were to do the slope. But let's go ahead and calculate it just to be on the safe side. Uh, so again, to calculate this, so we want to do slope of line n. So we have, remember, you subtract the y coordinates. So we have two minus negative two, and then now subtract the x coordinates. So one minus four, and so we have a double negative is a positive, and so this is going to be four. So this is going to be four over three, and so it looks like that looks like we were correct. It was four thirds. And so because these lines are actually, these slopes are not the same. So because the slope of K does not equal to the slope of line N, well, then that means that these lines are not parallel. Okay, so this means um, line K 
is not parallel. So this is the symbol for not parallel, right? So remember the parallel is the double bars. The not parallel just puts a cross through that, crosses it out. So line K is not parallel to line N. All right, uh, so now let's look at the second one. And this time I'm going to just um, calculate it um, by looking at the graph. I'm not gonna use, I'm not gonna plug in the numbers into the formula. So looking at line M and line Q, let's erase some all of this first. Okay, so for line M, we have here, we're gonna pick two points on it. This is a good point to choose. And this is a good point to choose. And so if we look at the uh, horizontal distance here, this horizontal distance is one, two, three. This vertical distance here is one. And so the slope of that is one third. And then if you look at line Q, let's choose this as a good point. And let's choose this as a good point. And so if you were to do the horizontal distance there, you're gonna count it one, two, three, four, five. And then this vertical distance here is one, two. I wanna make sure that I got this uh, correct here. One, two, three, four, five, one, two. Okay, so we, it looks like we got the um, correct counting measure there. And so, um, so it looks like so let's go ahead and write out our results. So it looks like the, the slope of line M is one, one over three, and the slope of line Q is two over five. So let's write the results here. The slope of line M, one over three, and it's a positive slope because the line is actually, if you uh, look at the line itself, the line is going in the upward direction, right? So that's a positive slope. Same thing for line Q is going the upward direction from left to right. So that's also a positive slope. And the slope of line Q is two over five, the change in Y over change in X. And so we clearly see that those slopes are not the same. And so we'll say that uh, line M is not parallel to line Q. All right, uh, so we're gonna look at another theorem here. And um, just so you know that this, this theorem actually is um, not, I don't, I don't believe is an official name of the theorem, the perpendicular line slope theorem. It's just what I call it, but it's a theorem that, says, that states that two non-vertical lines are perpendicular if and only if the product of their slopes is negative one. So that means if you multiply their slopes, remember the product means you, mul you multiply. So you're multiplying their slopes. If you do that and you get negative one, then that's how you know if they're perpendicular. So a vertical line and horizontal line are always gonna be perpendicular to each other. So according to the theorem says, it says here, if you have any two non-vertical lines and they cross each other, well then if their slopes, if you multiply their slopes, then they're negative one. And remember this symbol right here stands for perpendicular. So that means P is perpendicular to Q, P perp Q. Um, and then it says here uh, on the next side, if you have a vertical line, well, this is a vertical line, and this right here is a horizontal line. If you have a horizontal and a vertical line, they'll always be perpendicular. All right, um, so perpendicular lines, as we mentioned, they're perpendicular to each other if the product of their slopes is negative one, or, Another way to look at it is that their slopes are what we call opposite reciprocals. So opposite reciprocals means, opposite means you have an opposite sign. So one is positive, one is negative. Reciprocal means you flip the fraction. So this means you flip the fraction. So flip the sign and you flip the fraction. So for example, if the slope of line M is two over three, then the slope of the perpendicular line to that line would be, well, you have to flip the fraction, but you also have to flip the sign. And so this was positive earlier, and so now it's gonna change it to negative. And notice that the fraction has flipped itself. So it's now three over two instead of two over three. And so that's how you determine the slope of the line that would have to be perpendicular to it. Uh, so uh, a special example here will be the slope of a horizontal line. 
So remember that this the horizontal line is completely flat. So if you're standing on this line, well then you're just walking you're just walking horizontally and it's completely flat. As opposed to a line like this, well you're going to be you're going to be hiking uphill, right? And so if you're completely flat uh, walking on a flat surface, well then that's a slope of zero and you're not really working hard to walk on that surface, right? So the slope of a horizontal line is zero, but remember you can take any whole number and put it over one and that would be your fraction. And so this is your vertical distance and then this is your horizontal distance. So this is just saying that you're traveling horizontally, but you're not traveling vertically at all. You're not traveling in the y direction. You're only traveling in the x direction. That's what that represents. So the slope is zero for a horizontal line. Now, if you were to do a vertical line, well, then this is going to be on this is you're going to actually flip the fraction, right? So instead of having it being zero over one, well, then now it's one over zero. And then, of course, you, you flip the sign. And so now it's going to be negative. If it was, you know, positive earlier, then it's going to turn to negative. Well, it turns out you can't divide by zero, right? You, dividing by zero is not really allowed, right? So it's, it's actually uh, leads to an infinite slope, uh, which we call undefined. So you can't actually find that number. It's not actually a number. And so what, what that means is that, well, you're, if you're walking on a flat surface, you're perfectly fine. But there is just no way that you'll be able to walk up something that is vertical, right? You'd have to climb it, but not, not necessarily walk it or drive up a slope that is completely vertical. And so big, that's because the, it's an infinite slope or an undefined slope. And so if you were to take an undefined slope with a slope that is zero, well, then those are technically perpendicular. Perpendicular means, remember, that the angles that form from the intersection is 90 degrees is a right angle. So that's what it means to be perpendicular. And so horizontal and vertical lines are always perpendicular to each other because they always form that right angle. All right, so uh, in this example, we're gonna be determining if the following lines are perpendicular. So kind of like what we did when we did parallel, um, remember that we determined that they were parallel if uh, the slopes were the same. Now, if we find the slopes for both lines and they're opposite reciprocals of each other, or when we multiply them, we get negative one, then we know that they're, um, that they're perpendicular. So uh, let's go ahead and find the slope of line J. So we need to pick two good points on that line. So this is a good point. And this is a good point. Now again, if you don't find two good points on that line, just do your best and uh, find one that is as close to it as possible. And so we have that this horizontal distance here is two, and this vertical distance is one, two, and three. And so we know that the slope of line J is equal to change in y over change in x. So it's three over two. All right, so now let's look at the slope of line k. So we have this point here and this point here. And so the slope here is, oh, and uh, I forgot to mention that the slope, that j is actually going downwards. As we read the, as you read the graph from left to right, it's actually going down. So this is downhill, so the slope is negative. So we need to put a negative here. All right, um, so now this slope here, this right here, this horizontal distance is one, two, three, and this vertical distance here is one, two. So it's a distance of two. And so this slope of line K is equal to positive. This is going up, so it's gonna be positive. It's going uphill, so it's positive two thirds. And so if you, if you were to compare those slopes, um, well, we know that they're opposite reciprocals. One is negative, one is positive. And this one is flipped uh, as a flipped version of that. And so these two are actually opposite reciprocals. And so therefore those lines have to be parallel or perpendicular. And, uh, and we'll go ahead and multiply them because remember I, I mentioned that if you were to multiply those two slopes together, that you're gonna get negative one. And so let's see if that's true. 
So if I were to multiply slope j for j and with the slope of k, then that's going to be negative 3 over 2 times 2 over 3. And so, well, we know that 3 times 2 is 6, so this is going to be negative 6. We know that 2 times 3 is 6. And so we can see here that 6 divided by 6 is 1, and but it's negative, so it's going to be negative 1. And so we basically determined that if you were to multiply the slopes, you're always going to get negative 1 if the lines are perpendicular, which is what the theorem stated earlier that we mentioned. And so we know that line j is perpendicular to line k. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do the same thing, but this time we're going to show the calculation of slope so that you can practice looking at uh, how to do the slope uh, with a calculation rather than uh, with the graph. And so now for line h, we're going to pick two good points on line h. So let's say this point here, that's a good point. And... Um, in this case, okay, so for this world, well, there's no good points here other than like, so if you look at this, this is actually not exactly at negative four. And uh, so the best point to choose here in this case looks like will probably be this point uh, right here because that's actually exactly at a half right here. So uh, the coordinates of that point are negative 3 and then negative 1 half or basically negative 0.5 uh, so that's probably the best point to choose here uh, for the slope uh, so let's go ahead and actually calculate that so for this is line h and so the coordinates that we chose are negative 3 negative 0 0.5 and 1 negative 3 Okay, so we got those coordinates. And so now we're gonna have to calculate the slope of line H. Remember, you're gonna subtract the Y coordinates first. So we'll do negative three minus negative 0 0.5. Again, there's a double negative there that makes it into a positive. Negative three, uh, and let's do this on the bottom here. So we got one minus negative three. Subtract the X's now. Again, a double negative is a positive. So we have negative 3 plus 0.5 is negative 2.5. And then 1 plus 3 is 4. And uh, so basically negative 2.5 or 4 is, is my slope. But we want to simplify this. We want to make this look nicer. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 2. And the reason I'm going to do that is because if I multiply a half by 2, well, two halves make a whole. And so I know that this will give me a whole number. And I want a whole number when I have a fraction. I don't want to have a decimal with a fraction. And so 2.5 times 2 is 5. So this is going to be negative 5. And then 4 times 2 is 8. So now we got a nicer fraction, negative 5 over 8. And so now we can get the slope of line L. And so for line L, we'll pick this point right here that they cross, and in which they cross, as well as 3 this point right here, 3, 2. That's, those are two nice points. So we have 3, 2, and then the 1, negative 3. Okay, so then if we calculate the slope of L, we'll subtract the y's, so negative 3 minus 2. Subtract the x's on the bottom, 1 minus 3. Negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5 over, and then 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And so it looks like uh, double negative is a positive, so this is going to be 5 over 2. So now if we look at the, uh, if we compare the slopes here, then we clearly see that they're not opposite, they're not reciprocals, but they are opposite, right? One is positive, one is negative, but they're not, they're not uh, reciprocals. So like this re the reciprocal of five over eight will be eight over five, and we got nothing like that. And so lines L and H are not perpendicular, okay? So we would say line L or line H 
is not perpendicular to line L. All right, so now the next point uh, of the lesson would be to actually use the slope intercept form uh, and actually get an equation for the line through P that is parallel to a line or in perpendicular to a line. So we want to be able to tie in the concepts of parallel and perpendicular uh, and write them as an equation. Okay, so I'll write the line as an equation using that slope. So for part A, we want the line to be parallel to line L. And so we need to figure out what this slope of line L is. Well, thankfully, they already provide you with the equation for line L, but otherwise you would just have to find the slope between two points and calculate the rise and run. But you can see that the rise and run here, the rise is two, the run is four, and so two over four is one half, which they already give you the slope in that equation. So this is my slope. So this is the slope of line L, which is one half. And so now we want to figure out the slope of the new line, but the line has to be parallel to this line, right? And so because, um, and then we'll call this new line, we'll call this new line, uh, line M, or let's use line P. And so because we want P to be parallel to our line L, well then the slopes have to be the same. So that means that the slope of my L has to be the slope of my line P, right? Uh, so that means that the slope of my P has to be one half. All right, so that means we're gonna be using that slope in the slope intercept equation. So remember the slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So we had to figure out, well, uh, well, we know my slope, so this is now one half, we know that. And so we have y equals one half x plus b. So uh, next we have to find B. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the point that they gave us, the four negative one, in order to find uh, B. So remember, if, if we have a coordinate four negative one, that means my X is four and my Y is one. Okay, so let's write that coordinate down. We have four, one. So since we have the point four, one, this is X and this is Y. So I can plug that in to this equation. I know that y is 1, and uh, I will actually color code this so that you can see it better. So this is going to be 1, that's the y, and then this is the x. So we have here in this equation 1 equals 1 half times x, but we know x is 4, and then plus b. We don't know what b is yet. And so now uh, half, one half times four, well, this is just half of four. Half of four is two. So this is two. We got two plus B equals one. And so we can subtract two on both sides and that'll give us the value of B. So we got negative one equals B. And so now we know we can plug that in and we know the equation of our line. So the equation of our new line is one half X minus one because it's a negative, B is negative. All right, so that's our, our equation of the line that is parallel to line L. And so now we're gonna switch gears and find the line that is perpendicular to line L. And so if we go, if we look at, if we revisit the slope, well, we know that the slope of line L we said was one half. And so if we wanna do the opposite reciprocal, well then that means that we have to change the sign to negative because it was originally positive and then we have to flip and so when we flip it we get 2 over 1 and okay well 2 divided by 1 is 2 so this is just really negative 2 and so the slope of my line P is going to be negative 2 all right so now we got our slope and so because we got our slope, that means, remember, y equals mx plus b. Uh, so we're going to plug in negative 2 into there. So that's negative 2x plus b. And then remember that we know that the point 
that was on the other line is 4, 1. So using what we did earlier, we're going to plug in for x and y. So we got y, y equals negative 2 times uh, x plus b. And so we got negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. So adding 8 on both sides gives us that b is equal to 9. So we can plug that in here and we get our final equation, y equals negative 2x plus 9. And so this line, this is the equation of the line that would be perpendicular to line L. All right, guys, that is it for the video. I hope you uh, took a few things from this lesson. And as usual, I'll see you in the next one.